Uh, well, hey, Victory Life Atoka, it is an honor and a privilege to sit down today uh, with our senior pastor, Pastor yeah. Jacob Sheriff. And um, if you're with us today and maybe you were unaware mm -hmm. uh, that Victory Life Atoka is part of a larger church body, uh, we are one part of mm -hmm. Victory Life Church, which currently yep. has 10 campuses. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm the campus pastor in Atoka, but you are the senior pastor of yeah. our entire church. Um, yeah. Most of the time, we do a lot of life and church, at least from you guys' perspective, mm -hmm. on a local level in a right. lot of ways. There's a lot of conversations we have behind the scenes and yeah. a lot of those kinds of discussions. Uh, but you know, in particular, once a year, yeah. we're able to really highlight the fact that we're one church, and we do that through a, through a, an event called Jubilee. Yeah. Um, give me a, give me a little bit of the history of Jubilee yeah. and like, how did that even begin? Yeah. So our church is, you know, was launched in 1987. So it's a fairly old church and, uh, you know, more than three, th three decades into this, um, you, you know, as we move into all that God has for us, you want to remember the things that made you who you are. And as Victory Life, one family spread out in many places, there's certain calibrating things that that have to remain for us to stay in unity. And one of the things that emerged, just Jubilee, was one of those things that our leadership and our eldership um, 30 plus years ago, uh, in a time where people were trying to hype movement, were trying to like conjure revival, it was just important uh, for our leaders, our pastor, uh, to, to be calibrated to the Lord and Pastor Dwayne, our founding pastor, um, felt like the Lord had put on his heart a couple things that if we're going to mark time in our year, it needs to be marked by certain features. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of those, there was two main things that he had, he had led uh, our pastor to. Uh, and that was one uh, Thanksgiving that uh, for decades now, we take a week to just celebrate all that God has done. There's so much that happens uh, in our church. And uh, when when you, in one campus, you're seeing one element of that. Uh, in that particular campus, you're seeing things that happen that, that are a part of the fulfillment of our mission of seeing people transformed by Jesus. So we are seeing some healings. We're seeing people's families getting restored, prodigals coming home. You're seeing a little bit of that, but when you zoom out and see the whole church, you see that, wow, God's at work in yeah. more than what I'm visibly seeing. And we want to take time to say thank you. So our, it's our time to just thank God for all that he's done, to not just run past it and just look for the next or chasing the next high or chasing the next experience, but to just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. We don't want to take it for granted. It isn't to say that everything is is perfect, but it is to say the things that we see God has come through on, we are going to celebrate and say thank you. And then the second thing that was really important as a church is to just remain calibrated to the direction that the Lord is leading us. Many churches will hear the Lord and launch new ministry or do something new, reach new people, whatever those things are that the Lord has directed and in obedience say yes to that. But then often the church doesn't stay calibrated to what the Lord is saying. They get stuck on what he said. And um, we have his written word, so we're always gonna stick with that. But when he comes to specific direction the Lord gives, we wanna stay calibrated to that. So he's saying, you know, start this ministry, but he might say, you need to end doing it this way and go a different direction in that. And we always wanna remain attentive to that. So Jubilee's a time as we're celebrating we're also listening to the word of the Lord. Uh, sort of metaphorically, we lay everything on the altar like Abraham did mm -hmm. Isaac. The Lord told him, lay your son on the altar. But then the Lord said, do your son no harm. So we, in a sense, lay everything on the altar and say, all right, Lord, what do you, what do you want us to keep? What do, you, what do you want us to change? What do you want us to stop doing? Um, and so we're always listening uh, throughout the week, not just from the messages delivered by the speakers, but also what we're listening to just in our relationship with the Lord. A word may come into our heart in worship or conversations that we have behind the scenes or just things that's happening in the aisle or, or, or someone gives a word that maybe that was the word for us specifically. So we're always tuned in that specific week. I mean, we're always tuned into what the Lord's saying, but we're specifically marking that week that while we're celebrating and saying thanks, Lord, what are you telling us to do? Where are you directing us? And we want to stay calibrated to that direction, that vision. Yeah, it's been something that you know we've been a part of. My family's been a part of now for 
uh, more than 15 years. Mm -hmm. And we recently got to do that together at the end of July, into the beginning mm -hmm. of, of August. Uh, and this year, you know, was, was an incredible year. Yeah. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of really great things, you know, for, for Kim and I personally, and I think for our Atoka congregation yeah. and also for the congregation as whole. And so I really am curious, you know, coming out of Jubilee, what was, what was maybe one or two of the key moments that stood out to you just as senior pastor of like that felt significant or that yeah. felt like it was important yeah. for the next year or longer. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I mean, there were, if I'm, <laughs> two, I, I got three for you. <laughs> Just like me, I'll add one point, one point to it, because I think um, the the second and third night these were connected. Um, one of the speakers taught on disappointment, yeah, and um, I felt like that was significant because you know we're people of faith and we want to encourage people's faith. We want to activate faith. We want to live by faith, and then in the process of living by faith we experience disappointment. Things mm -hmm. don't turn out like we think they should. We don't We don't get the answer we're looking for. And many confusing things happen. And there's ways to talk that through. As a church, we always wanna be there to care for people navigating those seasons. But what disappointment can do is hinder your faith. You can let your disappointment become the ceiling of what you're believing for or what you're walking in faith um, in the midst of or what you're walking in faith for. And uh, I felt that was one lid that came off that, Okay, we experienced disappointment. All of us are gonna feel disappointment, but are we gonna let it stay? Are we gonna let it mm. lock us into the past? Are we gonna let yeah. it lock us into a prison that that now we could we no longer live by faith, we just live disappointed? And so I felt like that was a significant moment for people to get freedom um, from, from maybe a chain or a shackle of disappointment that it, we've let it hinder us to then go into the, the next night, which was really making uh, just simple faith, what it means to just simply believe Jesus. Yeah. And it was specifically about healing. I think the context can be much larger. Yeah. But but what really struck me is like how we complicate things and uh, just a call back from the Lord, just to simplicity, just trust Jesus, just trust Jesus, just keep trusting Jesus. Yeah. That's been stirring in me uh, big time. Well, to get to that simplicity, I felt like it was necessary that the disappointment got dealt with first. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those two things happen side by side, but then paired with that um, was a third thing was uh, Andrew's message that was just about activating the body. Yeah, This is not for people on stages. This is for all of us who, who've called upon the name of the Lord. Um, all of us, as the scripture says, Ephesians 4, 16, and oh, good old King James, as every joint supplieth. <laughs> uh, and and I, remember, I remember as he was reading that, of course he was reading the King James, so like, every joint supplies. Um, I remember thinking, have we made it simple enough for every joint to supply wow. uh, as a church? And so that's that's what's got me thinking now. It's like, okay, how are we activating people that this is not like people who are professional ministers and then the rest are just observers or participants. No, we're all activated in this. We're yeah. all sent as ministers. Uh, and so there's that sense of simplifying people's faith to get anchored in Jesus and all the layers that we sometimes lay on to just just gracefully remove those layers and just get back to simple faith in Jesus, trusting in him. And then from trusting in him, getting activated in the ministry he's put in everyone. Yep. That doesn't say like everybody's gonna form a 501c3 or we're gonna have a bunch of churches. <laughs> what it does mean is that God's placed a gift or calling on each person's life and he wants to see that manifest. Yeah for the sake of his kingdom and for the advancement uh, of his kingdom and for the glory of the name of Jesus. People being transformed by Jesus is not something that exclusively happens in church services. It happens because the church, which is you, which is me, the church is activated in what God's called us to and gifted us with to minister one to another yeah. and be vessels of Jesus for each other. I felt like those were some key moments that that now I'm lingering in. How, how do we keep people's faith simplified and trusting Jesus? And how do we activate people in ministry? Yeah, I think I, think I resonated with so much of the same sentiment of just we all deal with disappointing things and things yeah. that happen as we live life and as we trust God. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes things don't work the way we wish they would have. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that God isn't faithful. Doesn't yep. mean that God didn't even do what he said he would do. Yep. Um, so we all grapple with that and then mm -hmm. hearing hearing the message about just the recall of like, hey, get back to the simplicity of belief. Yeah. How did you receive salvation? Uh -huh. it, it's, it's grace through faith. Uh-huh. 
And getting back to that and then using that as a springboard into, okay, it's time to get engaged and, mm-hmm. and enact what God's put in yep. you. And if that if you're seasoned right now, you're called to be a mom, mm-hmm. go be a mom. Be a mom. And, yep. and, and understand that that has real yep. kingdom yep. value. If you're called into business, yep. go do business yep. and the, know the The power of the Holy Spirit is just as much empowering moms to be moms and business leaders to be business leaders as the empowerment of the spirit is from people like pastors being yeah. pastors. Yeah. It's, it's the same power of the spirit that enacts the gift on the inside of people to manifest Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. So did you have, was there, was there one kind of concise takeaway apart from those things that you had that you were like, you know what, I feel like maybe yeah. this is a little bit of a focal point for our whole church yeah. um, going forward. Well, kind of the bookends to that, I came in with a, carrying a word about capacity, that we need to increase capacity. Um, and and that, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to ever come across like, oh, I'm all about church growth and we're just going to get <laughs> tons of people. Well, here's the deal. I, I have two ways of dealing with that. First off, we're going to trade, we're going to chase Jesus. We're going to search for Jesus. We're going to be desperate for Jesus. And I believe that a hungry world, a desperate world is going to pick up on that. In, in the midst of a desert, an oasis draws life. Yeah. We're going to be an oasis as a church in that community. Uh, in, in Atoka, we're going to be an oasis and the thirst are going to be drawn to that. So I, that's one way of saying it. We're just we're not chasing numbers, we're chasing Jesus. But here's the deal. People need Jesus. Yeah. And there's a ton of unreached <laughs> people in our city that that we need to make sure we're making space for. Um, we need to, to take lids off our thinking and we need to stop making our world so small and letting our complacency or our comfort zone keep us from reaching people, from ministering to people, from changing, from seeing lives changed by Jesus and, and being ministers in our community. So that, there was a word that I was carrying about capacity increase, that we've got to increase our capacity, um, that, that what that means is we can handle more. Um, yeah. We can mobilize more people. We in our personal lives, are we trustworthy for God to give us more? Uh, so we have to grow in our capacity to be trustworthy, uh, wise stewards of what God's given us um, and and not get off into arrogance or pride or insecurity. Mm. So I was carrying a word about capacity and then the way um, uh, we ended Jubilee, Pastor Dwayne talking about enlarging of the heart was kind of a, a seal for me that rounded out all of it is before we increase capacity outside, we got to increase capacity inside. Wow. Um, our hearts have to grow. Yeah. Um, it's just, we, as human beings, we have a natural gravitational pull towards complacency, towards our comfort zone. And then if we foster that too long, then we get kind of clickish and like us for no more kind of deal. Well, churches can be notorious for that, that we have insiders and then we're not, we're not certain about outsiders. Mm-hmm. And if you're, gonna, if you're gonna reach people, if we're gonna see lives transformed, first, th- we as the church have to let our hearts increase. We have to be ready for more of what the Lord has for us. We can't assume we already know what the Lord wants to show us or that we're already doing what the Lord has called us to do. There's more for us. Well, that has to begin with our hearts getting increased. Yeah. We have to be open to to hearing the Lord. We have to be open to to the Lord putting. You're not gonna minister to someone if your heart isn't enlarged with some love for them. No. So so that's what that's what I felt like was rounding out. Okay, we're gonna increase capacity, but we first have to make sure that our hearts are enlarged of love, compassion, um, are, that we're able and ready to exercise love for our city, love for our neighbors, love for our enemies. <laughs> um, there, th- that that's where it's going to begin. So if we're gonna if we're gonna activate and see capacity increase, we've got to first grow in our our capacity to love. And I, you know, I think that's that's always true in our world where we live as followers yeah. of Jesus. Is that we always have to be aware and paying attention to the to our capacity mm-hmm. and where is my heart. Am I allowing the Lord to stretch my heart? Yeah, I think particularly that's important mm-hmm. post pandemic. Oh yeah, because we all spent the better part of a year uh, in our house, mm-hmm. in our sweatpants, on our couch, not thinking about anyone else, mm-hmm. uh, really being concerned about keeping us and our family safe and making sure we had mm-hmm. the good cushy toilet paper mm-hmm. um, and some of the other things. And mm-hmm. I think on the back side of that. Um, it's particularly important. And so I think it is one of those things where this is kind of that that word in season of like God going, mm-hmm. okay, hey, let's take that next step. 
yeah. into what I have for you now. So yeah. really, uh, really resonate with what, what you're saying even there. I think that's so much of what uh, I wrote down and picked up as well yeah. from, from Jubilee. Well, and, and again, to, to, to reiterate what you're saying, I want to make sure that, that we, we just double click on that. It's really important. All of those things are good things and probably should have been markers of our sure. life for our whole life. And, and I would say that the things that we're saying, hardly anybody's going to be like, I've never heard that, or I've never <laughs> thought of that. Um, it, it's not like any of this is super profound. What I think is important is when we set aside a week to celebrate and listen to what the Lord's saying, and we're hearing that clearly. There, there, there. It goes from being good to know mm -hmm. to being important to put in place yep. or important to practice. That's the urgency that I sense. Is and, it's important to put this into practice. And so I, I think for me as a campus pastor, I think for us as a as a entire church campus, that would maybe even be the question that I would have for you: mm -hmm. is what are some of the ways that as individual church members yeah. and as a local church body, can we begin to integrate those things right. into our daily living yeah. as well as our church rhythms and some of the things sure. that we do as a body? Um, I Man, what I would say is uh, connecting to a, a kind of a prophetic word that was spoken over our church that I think is the always to me, it's the first step to integrate any of this um, is to grow in our prayer life. Um, mm to be a house of prayer was one of the words given. And the reason why I resonated that well, we, we spent time before Jubilee cultivating that. Um, but uh, I don't think our hearts can increase. I don't think we can enlarge our hearts if we're not uh, pursuing the face of Jesus mm -hmm. and, and growing in our intimate life with him, growing in our intimacy with Jesus will expand our heart. We're not gonna be able to grow in love by trying to love. We're going to grow in love by seeing God's love for us yeah. and God's love for our neighbor. Um, you, we're not going to be able to, to um, encounter the presence of God in a church gathering if we're not pursuing his presence continually. Yeah. And so I'd say like the first admonition that I would love to see be a marker of our church is that we're a church of prayer, yeah. uh, our personal lives. There's no condemnation of people. Oh, I've tried that and I get it. I, <laughs> we, we've been in this a long yes. time to know there's so many obstacles. But what I found is that when you place value on something, you make time for it. Yeah. You don't make time for things you don't value. And so uh, I, think, I think the first step as a church is that we spend time in prayer. And if you'll start praying for the lost, your heart will enlarge for the lost. Mm -hmm. If you start praying for the unchurched, your heart will enlarge for the unchurched. Um, increased capacity is not about, hey, we got a new system and a new program and a new ministry. <laughs> it's none of that. Like we're, what I, what I believe for our church um, is what I, what I wanna see uh, is that, um, that, that we're serious about being disciples. It doesn't mean that we're dour or mean-spirited or religious. What I just mean is like, we're called to be disciples of Jesus, not just Christians in the in, in a in a cultural definition of yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, Christian is a word used twice in the New Testament. Disciples used many more times than two. <laughs> so being a disciple of Jesus means that that like whatever I'm learning from the scriptures, whatever I'm learning from the community, I'm called to put it into practice as a learner of Jesus. Um, I think that uh, we should take relationship with each other seriously and not let um, gossip, offense, you got to guard your heart. If you're going to enlarge your heart, you got to guard your yeah. heart. And so you got to be cautious of things like unforgiveness and yeah. offense uh, to get fostered in there or um, things that can be a marker of church culture are things like strife and gossip. And it's just, we, we, we want to fend off those things. We want to deal with those things because that's being a serious disciple of Jesus. And so what I'd say like for our church and church members is realize that there is a kingdom of God and we're called to live in that reality. The only way to live in that reality is to be a follower of Jesus, is yeah. to live as a disciple of Jesus and to take seriously whatever level of maturity you are. You might be new to the faith. Uh, this might be brand new to you. Wherever you are, take seriously being a disciple of Jesus. I personally think that that gets built on a solid prayer life first yeah. Uh, because you actually need to know the person you're following. And that happens in prayer and in scripture. But I would say that that's my first and probably most important. There's numerous things we, we need to be doing, 
But if we, if we don't foster that in our intimate relationship with the Lord, all of our doing will begin to overrun our being. We have yeah. to first be a disciple by being in relationship with the Lord. And then the doing will come from that. Because then the other thing I'd say is we need to get used to serving. Yeah, That can happen in the church, but we need to get used to, used to serving our community, whatever that means. There's yeah. specific things in each campus about what that is. But in general, you just need to get used to serving. And, but but that's, not, that's not in a vacuum. That has no. to be built on a relationship with the Lord. Yeah, that's very good. That's very good. So we're seeing in, in Atoka, and we've had a couple different conversations about this, and yeah. this is nothing that anybody in the room is going to not know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're seeing a significant amount of uh, economic investment, mm-hmm. and our town is starting to grow, and we're starting to see uh, some things develop and, and happen. And I'm just curious, from your perspective as senior pastor, yeah. um, we've had some conversations, but you could share with the entire church some of your heart and your vision, just like for our community and really yeah. what you believe God wants to do in Atoka and Cole County where yeah. we are every day. Yeah. Oh man. There's so much to that. <laughs> um, you know, uh, some things I'm seeing is uh, there's always a challenge when uh, small towns start to grow. Yeah. There's many people that are pursuing growth just to grow. And there's many people that are resisting growth because they like comfort. And we're just stuck in the middle being the church. How do we navigate this? Um, that what I what I believe uh, in, in Atoka and Cole County, that that growth um, is good uh, yeah. because uh, we want to see lives elevated. I believe we're in a season where uh, the the cultural principalities of our region, namely things like poverty, drug addiction, despair, yeah. things like that, uh, are get, are are going to be addressed. Well, that isn't just because businesses are investing money; it's because the church is focused on what the church does. That yeah. we have we're we're in we're in spiritual warfare, and so what I would say, my encouragement uh, of our church there, planted there, that that the, our church has been there for now two decades yeah. um, in in this city. And we're believing for growth because we want to see lives transformed, not just because we want to see better city streets, which I'm all in favor of. <laughs> um, but we, what I see is that economic growth is a chance for uh, when, we, when we bless the city, there's a couple different verses in Proverbs 13. One of them says that by the blessing of the upright, the city is uplifted. Yeah. Um, so when the church is a blessing, it lifts the city up, uh, that we'll see people come out of poverty, that when there's generational poverty. But I also believe that that, that is returned back unto us because it takes money to, to sure. fulfill the mission. Yeah. Um, and so by, by seeing our city blessed, we're believing that the overflow, that God's flowing blessing to us. And then for us personally, that's why we need to increase our capacity is because if in, in, in times of economic growth, if people's personal economy begins to increase, there's always a temptation that comes with that. Sure. And that's to get our eyes off of Jesus and on to money or provision or uh, you know, all, many other things that, that money can do. But when, our, when we've increased our capacity uh, to be wise stewards, that there's so much said um, uh, in scripture about our finances and what God's called us to in our finances. Jesus talked about money more than he talked about heaven. Mm. Uh, there's a reason. Uh, we need to be wise stewards. We need to be, um, our hearts need to be in the kingdom of God so that God can trust us with more money yeah. to be a greater blessing to our city. And I think that that, that brings the whole city up. Uh, and then the other, the other place in scripture that I think of is in Jeremiah 29, where he says, you need to build houses, plant vineyards, pray for the peace Play, pray for the blessing of the city, for in its blessing, you will be blessed. Yeah. Um, that we're a part of the city being blessed. Uh, we get to participate in that. That's not something that's for them over there, and we are somehow different. We are in this city, uh, and so we are a part of seeing it blessed, and God will entrust us with more to be a greater blessing. Um, those are just some the brief things that yeah. I, I sense and see that I think it's important. I think it's connected to capacity increase, enlarging our heart, getting activated in ministry, because I think that as we do that, God will entrust us with more yeah. um, and we can reach more people. We can see more lives and families and generations transformed by Jesus when we do that. 
It's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking some time and, yeah. you know, us sitting down together and being able to share a conversation that, you know, we get to have these conversations from we time do. to time, we do. Uh, but to be yes. able to share it with the whole church yes. uh, is a unique opportunity. So thank you for yeah. the time and for the investment. And thank you. the only thing I would ask is, why don't you pray us out of the video and just yeah. speak blessing over the congregation? Yeah. Thank you guys for, for joining, for watching, for, for participating in this. It's a, it's an honor to get to, to share and it's an honor to get to lead. And again, uh, Pastor Adam and I get to have these conversations and I'm glad we get to bring some of this to you. Father, we're so grateful, grateful for what you're doing and grateful that by grace, you've called us into participating in what you're doing Jesus, you're the head of the church. And so we trust you. We lean on you. You're the good shepherd. You lead and guide us uh, by your Holy Spirit. And so I pray that we are tuned in to the spirit, to the direction that the Holy Spirit is taking us. And that in each person, is who, their ears are tuned to the voice of the spirit to be led and guided in their personal lives, their families, um, their businesses, their workplaces, their neighborhoods. I thank you that your spirit is speaking, leading, and guiding. And all of this is for the glory of Jesus, that, that Jesus' name be lifted high. So Jesus, we, we honor you. We, we are grateful for all that you've done to save us, heal us, redeem us. But we're also thankful that you called us into participation, that we are partners with you to see your kingdom established here on earth as it is in heaven. And so we offer ourselves as willing vessels, humble and submissive to you to be those vessels enacting your kingdom. And again, we pray for it to be here on earth in Atoka, Atoka County, Cole County, the surrounding area on earth as it is in heaven. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.